realistic watercolour flowers. That's what we're looking at in today's video. I'm going to show you step by step how to paint a beautiful hollyhock flower. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you can find all things watercolour and a little bit of mixed media tuition as well. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the little bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a video for you. I make one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. So often here on YouTube, I'm just working on little samples of paper, aren't I? I'm just doing sort of little techniques and little bits of colour mixing. So I'm just using scraps of paper, but today we're doing something a bit different. I'm going to be actually working on one of my own paintings. I'm going to show you how to paint a hollyhock flower and this is going to be part of a huge painting that I'm making. So I've actually got hollyhocks uh, growing in my garden. I'm the worst gardener in the world but they just come up every year and they all seem to have kind of interbred so I don't have any yellow or any white ones but I do have lots of shades of pink so I had it in mind that I would make a large painting with four stems of pink hollyhocks and each one would be slightly different. Now I've already done the very pale almost white pink ones and then I've done the very very bright pink ones. I'm on now to this kind of fuchsia coloured ones and then I've got these incredibly dark sort of wine coloured stem to come next. So that's what we're going to be working on is this fuchsia coloured hollyhock. I'm going to take you through eight stages of drawing and painting a single bloom. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be using some new paint colours that I've actually designed and they are available to buy. They're not actually available yet, they will be available in about a week. So um, if you're watching this video and it's just gone up, those colours are not available yet. Don't be thinking to yourself that, um, oh well this is no good to me, she's using these paints, she's trying to sell me these paints, I don't have these paints. It doesn't matter, you get exactly the same value from this video, you can just use your own colours and I'll give you some tips as we go along about colours which you may own which will be perfectly suitable for this. If you are interested in the paints, they'll be ready in about a week's time, we're just doing some of the final branding. I'll talk about them as we go through the video and I'll link to them in the description of the video. As I said, they just won't be available if the video has gone up today. So we're going to get on and learn how to paint this hollyhock and um, we can start with the drawing of it because often when people draw flowers they all seem to face forwards, don't they? I'm going to show you an incredible technique I've got for um, being able to draw any flower facing in any direction. It's not just good for hollyhocks, this is going to work for anything. So I'm going to show you this first, so let's get on and draw our hollyhock. So here we are on my hollyhocks painting. So these were the flowers I did first, these pale pink ones. You can see they've got a blush of darker pink in the middle. Then I moved on to these very bright pink ones and I've actually got one in the studio that I cut this morning so um, you can see this one here, bright pink petals and they fade to white in the middle and then they've got some yellow and some green in the centre. The ones that I want to do now are the ones that are more sort of, they're darker than these ones and they're actually a different type so um, this one's rather wilted, I picked it from the garden this morning but you can see that they've actually got these strong blushes of dark colour in there and there's very little bright green in the centre and they're not white, these bits are pale yellow like the first ones are. So this is what we're going for with this next flower and um, I've got some printed images here. I haven't used the best paper and I haven't messed around with light levels so they are much darker. Um, you can see that the yellow has been washed out and the, the colour blotches barely show on the petals but it really doesn't matter because I've got the real things both in and next to the studio. So what I want to do now is draw this flower here and paint it. Now you'll see that it's over to one side so let me give you a quick drawing tutorial. So if I were to draw a circle and then another circle and then maybe make some kind of petals in here you can see that I would get a flower that was circular and facing forward. So the best way to draw a flower that's on its side is to actually try and see what shape it would be around the edges. So let's look at this one here. Can you see how you've got this straight edge here and then it goes round here? So we're going to get, we're going to sort of um, imitate that shape. So I'm going to take this straight edge. We're almost going to imagine what it would look like if I put a box around it. Not necessarily a box with four sides, but uh, a box with many sides. Maybe that's not a box. Do boxes have to be square? I don't know. So we're going to draw a straight edged shape which this flower would fit into. So in other words, if I took my pencil and straight edged here to here to here to here, what would that shape look like? And here it is. The next thing I want to decide is where's the center point. There's always a center point to flowers. It may appear that there isn't a center point um, with things like chrysanthemums and things with multiple multiple petals but there is always a center point. You just may not be able to entirely see it but you can normally figure it out even if you can't exactly see it. We can see it here. 
it's right in here it's not up here it's right at the base here it's this part here so what I'm going to do is indicate that now look how close it is to this side and how far it is away from here so it's right over to one side we can also look and see how far it is here it's pretty much even I would say so we now can draw our little center point here from there it's a simple matter of just getting those petal shapes in and starting to form them around and I'm then taking everything out from that center point now if there's a petal edge up here it's still going to come from this center point and I can then adjust those shapes to get them more organic looking again I've got this bit here and comes round and then I've got this back petal here which actually tips over a little bit I'm drawing very quickly here I should do it a little bit more accurate on the actual drawing but can you see how that once you've got that idea of the outside shape and the center point then all of a sudden you've got a flower that looks much more naturalistic and that is absolutely facing in the right direction now you can do this with any type of flower so if we imagine for example a daisy that's looking upwards and we draw the shape around it it looks like that and the base is down here it's really simple then isn't it we're just going to take our petals out so this is just a really easy trick for always getting your flowers facing in the right direction so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to draw my hollyhock I will rub out any guidelines I don't need after it's drawn so here's the stem I've placed in and I've placed my shape in for my hollyhock flower now you notice that I drew the stem first I drew the whole of the stem I've already put one leaf in what I didn't do was draw the stem then draw the leaf and then carry the stem on you'll end up with things out of alignment that way so because these grow along this one main stem I put the stem in first and then I'll take everything else around there so when it comes to putting this flower in I'm going to draw the flower before I even rub this out and then I know that the flower is going to sit really well on top of that stem just like before I'm constantly looking to reference my drawing you know I feel that almost it should be a little bit bigger so you know I'm not going to be afraid to go out past my guidelines they were just guidelines I want these flowers on this painting to be really large I've got this big petal top coming up here curving round and I've always got that outside guideline to roughly show me the right direction to do things in I can't actually from the photograph see exactly where the petal edges are all of them but I can pretty much get an idea I know that from looking at the actual flower itself each one has maybe five six seven petals and a mount anyway that's uh, that's more than just a couple and less than ten so I'm just going to get some of those petal edges showing here and let's spring this round here and just all the time looking back at my initial picture for reference these are organic natural things so there's a lot of leeway to be had with the actual um, the actual shape of them because they will all vary it's not like doing a portrait you can get away with stuff so I've got a flower in there and you know I'm I think we'll just put this petal in here it comes around yeah I'm pretty happy with that actually so you see I've still got all these guidelines I've got the outside straight lines and I've got this center stem what I'm going to do now is take those out if I should accidentally rub out any little bits of the um, flower that I want to keep I'll just pop those back on before I continue with the painting just so that I'm completely certain of where I'm going with it and that I don't accidentally paint something the wrong colour. So if you've watched this channel for a while you'll know that um, I get really annoyed with people using too much masking fluid. It's really overused, it's not suitable for everything and I have other videos on this subject and uh, in fact I've got a nice video about alternatives to masking fluid so I'll link to that one up above if you'd like to watch that. You won't go off of this video if you click any of those information cards, it'll just line that one up to watch next. However, on this occasion, I am going to use a very small amount of masking fluid. So I'm not anti-masking fluid. It's just that it doesn't give the right result for everything. And it can be really, really noticeable. But the way we're going to use it today for the center of this hollyhock is going to look just perfect. So I'll show you how to do it now. So I've got Schminky masking fluid here. And um, it's quite an expensive one. It's one of the best ones I've found so far in terms of it coming off the paper. I do prefer a colored masking fluid because it's so hard to see where you put... Um, put white and this one actually dries clear so it's even harder to see but the problem with the blue one was I found that it stained the uh, the paper so um, search for the perfect masking fluid goes on. I'm going to apply it with this which is a ruling pen. I'll put a link in the description to um, any tools and, uh, and paints that I'm using today. 
and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it around the edge of these uh, of this stone so if you have a look at this one here you see this broken edge now I'm not using it because I can't paint neatly um, I'm perfectly capable of painting an edge that that tiny but the problem is that you can't paint fast and paint neat so in order to flood the color onto these petals in a really natural way and get that broken edge I'm going to have to use masking fluid so what I'm not doing is applying the masking fluid across the whole area because the more masking fluid you put on the more chance there is of it tearing your paper and I really don't need it anyway I can easily avoid painting into this center part but what I can't easily do is get this tiny broken edge at the same time as flooding very quick color onto the petals now we've got some light lines on the uh, on the petals themselves but I'm not going to use masking fluid for that either i may put a bit of shadow down here so i'm just going to get some little dots down here too and that's as much masking fluid as i'm going to apply to this flower now this is probably about the third time that i've done a large painting with hollyhocks in and one thing that's always driven me up the wall with them is they've got these tiny pale lines on them i've tried using masking fluid in the past when i was a less experienced artist it just doesn't work and all the things you know I could think of using like wax I just couldn't find a way of doing it and getting these really really tiny fine lines I finally sussed it out and we're going to use a pencil not a watercolor pencil an ordinary standard colored pencil let me show you how it's done so while the masking fluid's drying I'm going to start applying some pale lines now I could have used a pale pink here because the lines on these flowers are not quite as pale as on some of the other flowers but the truth is I don't seem to have a pale pink pencil in the studio so what I'm going to do is take these out you won't be able to see them yet but I'm actually going to take these light lines out now you don't get a line that's as harsh as masking fluid it won't probably reserve pure white paper it depends on the levels of, of wax in the um, in the pencil and this is a Faber-Castell Polychromos which is a great brand but I don't believe they're wax based I can't remember so I'm taking these lines out really important when you make these lines that you follow the shapes of the petals because they're going to help to show the shape of the flower when it's finished now you're not going to see them at this point they don't even show that much when you put the paint on but they will appear very well when the paint is dry and they'll be incredibly subtle I've sharpened the pencil a lot in this case so they're going to be quite fine lines and we're just going to take them up and out I'm going to get on and do that on all of the petals if you're getting some value out of this tutorial I'd love to ask you to do me a favor I'd be so grateful if you could click the like button YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction so if you like share subscribe or even leave me a comment YouTube will show this video to more people and I can teach more people how to paint so hollyhocks vary and even the ones in my garden which I consider to be all perhaps the you know the same breed they're just interbred the centers of them are very different and the colors are very different the uh, the bright pink ones that I did they have this flash of green where the petals overlap you get this very distinctive V shape with hollyhocks and um, often it's a flash of green in this case it's a very very pale yellow as is the center so this is going to give a real real contrast with these strong dark pinks we're going to put in later on so we're going to go on now and do the yellow next so we're going to put our yellow in and I'm using this color here which is one that I've designed called buttercup now it's slightly warmer than a lemon yellow um, but you can of course use a lemon yellow you could use an aerolean yellow Probably the closest colour to this would be something like a cadmium yellow light and I'm going to really water it down because it's a beautiful bright sunny yellow but I want it in this case to look very very pale and we're just going to drop it into the middle. Now this colour will barely show until we actually go forward and put colours around it so don't be surprised if it's not that showy at the moment. I'm not going to worry too much about the pencil most of that will come out later on. I'm also going to get some yellow into these parts here. I should actually have drawn some of these little places where the, uh, the petals naturally cross over. So let's just pop those in. It's a real feature of hollyhocks that you get these kind of triangular shapes. So we'll just pop some of those in. So these are very small amounts down here, but it's really going to stand out later on as we get those darks around so just getting that tiny, tiny flash of very pale yellow in the center. Well, it's ironic that the color that's perfect for this, uh, for this hollyhock is actually the color of fuchsia. So we're going to mix this lovely fuchsia type color now, and I'm gonna show you how to flood it onto the petals 
in a way that you get this lovely transparent um, lush look to your watercolors you're not going to get any harsh edges any drying lines it's just going to bleed nicely across the top of the yellow that we put on previously and it's going to look beautiful so that's what we're going to do next so now we're going to mix our colors for the hollyhock now this one here is the um the pink that i used here so this pink is called clematis and it's a really bright blue based pink and then i've got another color here called delphinium now delphinium is um i i designed it because i wanted a color that would do for blue flowers like bluebells and delphiniums and so it's uh, it's kind of on the cusp between blue and purple. It's going to be the exact right colour to adjust this pink with. So in order that we get this third colour here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of my clematis and put some delphinium in it. And then we're going to get this colour that's very much like fuchsia colour, which is the colour that we're going to use on this hollyhock. So here's the colour I've mixed and I've been swatching it here. So you can see here it's gone a little bit too far towards the purple so I added a bit more of the pink and this is the colour I'm looking for, this kind of rich fuchsia colour. So this is the colour we're going to use now. There's also a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit of white near the centre of the petal. So I've got two jam jars full of water so that I've got one that I can uh, rinse this paintbrush in and another that will be clean water. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit of clean water in the centre of my flower. So I've got another paintbrush. You know, there's no rules, there's no saying that you can't use two paintbrushes and sometimes it can be really helpful if you're sort of going between one colour and, and clean water or one colour and another to have two paintbrushes on the go. So what I'm going to do is put my water here towards the centre where I've got the yellow and then I'm going to go out from there. So I'm just going to go up near it here and just drag it across so that it hits that water. If it starts to spread too far at any point, I'll just dry my brush on some tissue paper and that will stop it from spreading too far. It only spreads really when it's too wet. But I'm keeping the paintbrush fairly wet, as you can see, and just moving it really quickly. You can see I've changed to a bigger paintbrush here because I need to get across this petal quickly. And this is one of the mistakes that beginners make with flower painting is they take too long over a petal or a flower and then they end up with a load of hard edged drying lines. So I'm only going to work on this for sort of maximum of 30 seconds. Just tidy that edge up there and then I'm going to stop. So as well as the dark pink colour on the petals, there's also some really strong sort of pinkish red towards the base. Now we're going to apply that next and I'm actually going to show you how to drop it in as you put the first colour in. However, that may be a little bit tricky if you're a beginner, you're thinking, oh, I have to control this, I have to drop this other colour in. I'm going to show you an alternative way as well so that you can do it slowly and you can put your pink layer on, allow it to dry, re-wet and then put your dark red on top. So I'll show you how to do it both ways in this painting. So I'm going to introduce another colour now and this colour is actually one that I named Hollyhock. So um, there we are, that's quite apt, isn't it? So this is a very sort of dark madder pink red. So you can see it's not as bright as this one here, but it's still quite pink based. It's more of a rose pink when it's watered right the way down. But I'm going to use it quite strongly to add that touch of dark into the centre of these petals. And I'm going to do it first of all as we go along. So I'm going to put the colours wet into wet. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you how to place it on this one, which we've already painted. So you've got these two options here for doing it in layers if you're a little bit less confident or for doing it in one go. So again, let's start with clean water. You can see I'm being very careful not to work next to the petal where I've already worked. I do not want at any point for these petals to bleed into each other because this is more of a botanical style. It wouldn't really be appropriate if one petal bled into another. There's nothing wrong with doing that if you're working loosely, but it's not the effect I'm going for today. You can see that that's spreading a little bit too far there. So I'm just going to dry my brush and just lift out a bit of the moisture and that will stop it from going too far. You're getting this nice bleeding effect which I quite like so I'm just going to quickly go in and paint the rest of that petal. You can see I haven't got 100% accuracy with the edge here. It's far more important that you put the paint on quickly than that you faff around and, uh, and get 100% accuracy with the edges of the petal shape. I don't want to leave any puddles so there we are and whilst it's still wet I'm going to go in with this quite sticky paint without adding any additional water and what I'm going to do is just pop it along here to get that darkness in the centre. 
Now the second alternative to doing this is to re-wet the first layer here and place the red on top. Now it's either one or the other, so either you let the first layer get completely dry and re-wet it with clean water, or you go wet into wet. You can't go halfway, so you can't start working on this one when it's halfway between wet and dry, because then you'll get uneven drying levels and everything will go wrong and you'll get lots of back runs and drying lines. So I'm going to re-wet this petal now. Some colour may lift, so what I don't want to do is to spread this colour, and reds and purples lift more than anything, so I don't want to spread this colour down here. So though I'm re-wetting, I'm going to start down here on the white area and go up and out so that I'm not spreading that colour further down and possibly losing some of that nice white area. So I'm going to take this water right the way across. Now I'm going to take it across the whole petal. Even if I'm not working on the whole petal, this is really important because water alone can leave a drying line. So even though I'm only working on a portion of the petal, I'm going to wet the whole petal. So that's ready now. And now it's exactly the same process as before dipping into the sticky paint. You can do this with pan paint or tube paint, just don't use too much water. And then I'm going to drop that red along there, just where I want it. Now because the paint is sticky, it's not going to move anywhere. We're going to get a nice soft edge, but it's not going to spread. And that's because the paint is thicker than the surface it's going onto. If I'd gone in with very drippy, drippy wet red paint here, it would spread everywhere and I would have no control. So that's two methods of applying your fuchsia colour and then putting your deep red on top. So I'm going to continue painting each of these petals individually and I'm going to make sure that each one is dry before I work next to it. Now this little bit here is actually the edge of the petal turned over so in order that it looks a bit different to the rest I'm going to paint it slightly lighter and then it'll stand out against the dark of the petal underneath. So I'm going to take that round, just want to get that nice and light there. And the same with this little one here. Then I'm going to go on, I'm going to alternate so that I'm never working next to one that is wet. I'm going to place all of the rest of the petals in, in exactly the same way as I did the first two. Now at this stage in our flower painting, we need to define the centre of the flower a little more because all of that pale yellow, it's not really showing the difference between the, uh, the centre stamen and the outside petals and also the gaps between the petals. So I'm going to show you now how to drop some shadow in. Now this is an area that beginners often have trouble with. Um, shadows on flowers, it's so, so easy to get it wrong. And then you can end up making your flower look dead. So we're going to avoid earth colours, we're going to avoid Payne's Grey. We're going to use a colour that I've mixed especially for painting shadows on petals. However, don't worry if you don't have this colour, I'm going to give you some alternatives that will work really well as well. So at this point you may notice um, a difference in the light levels and this is just because I'm actually filming this section on a separate day for reasons that I won't um, bore you with. So I've got the pink and the red done, I've got this nice fuchsia colour, I've got these dark reds in the middle, I've got the white and I've got the yellow here. Um, the issue I've got is that when I take this masking fluid off you won't be able to see the edge of this stamen here. You won't be able to see once I've rubbed out the pencil lines where the um, the little edges of the petals are. So what I'm going to do now is drop some shadow colour in and it's going to be very very lightly done. Now you can see I've used this shadow here on the on the pale yellow flowers. Now this is the colour from my new set and I've formulated it to be on the lilac side. Now it can be adjusted to make it less lilac and there is a colour mixing leaflet that comes with it. However, the reason I've pushed it slightly into lilac is because I want to avoid it looking brownish, making the flowers look dead, but also I want to enable it to be used on top of yellow, as it has been on this one here, without going green. Now, often green shadows on yellow flowers are fine, but I want people to have the option of that not happening if they don't want it to happen. So if you don't have this colour, what you can do is, whichever painting you're doing, if you've already got a blue and a pink and a yellow, you can just mix your own grey. I would keep those primary colours on the cool side. What you don't want to use is something like Payne's Grey. It's got too much black pigment in, it's too heavy. You can also use a colour called Davies Grey, which is a lovely soft ready-made grey. It does tend slightly towards the chalky greenish side, but there are plenty of flowers where that is appropriate so there are options if you don't have this color for mixing yourself but I would avoid like I said I would avoid using any earth colors and avoid using grays because those are the sort of things that can end up making your flowers look dead far better to mix your own grays or to use a soft ready-made gray such as Davies gray so you can see it can go quite dark I want to keep it really really subtle Whilst it might go dark in places, I want to keep it in very, very small areas. You can see I've changed to a smaller brush. 
I've still got two jars of water so I'm going to start off by wetting the areas because again I don't want any hard edged shadows within my flowers themselves so we go to this petal here and I'm just going to wet the edge around here. So I'm taking that water up now because I'm not taking up quite as far as the paint pigment it shouldn't leave a drying line and I'm just going to dip in without really adding too much water. When you've got too much water on your brush you have a lack of control but then you do want the paint to flow as well so it's always a balancing act. So I'm going to dry my brush a little bit and you can see what I'm aiming for here is to get the edge of that masking fluid so that we get a little bit of texture around the edge there. I'm also as well I want to go in here and get some shadow around this base part here. Now you do get on flower petals you do get very dark shadows but they're normally in tiny tiny amounts so we're going to go dark there but then as it comes up here I'm going to wet and we're just going to allow it to go lighter because we don't want to lose the lovely lightness that pale yellow colour. I'm just going to put a little bit here as well so that when the masking fluid is rubbed off, can you see all those tiny little dots? When the masking fluid is rubbed off, then we will see the texture there. I'm also going to go in in various edges here, um, around these edges here. I'm going to be careful not to paint next to something I've just painted. I'm not going to, for instance, go in here when I've already got wet paint here. Again, I'm not going to work on this edge while I've got this edge still wet. Now, this petal here is not surrounded by anything wet, so I can work on that one next. So I'll just show you that one. So again, I'm going to go in with some clean water here. What I'm looking for here is just to get those very tiny edges there. I don't want to lose the white and I don't want to lose the yellow, but I just want to make sure that when those pencil lines are removed or partially removed, because there may be a tiny bit of pencil left at the end, you don't want to be too obsessive about it. We want most of it to come off. And I do have to go a little darker for YouTube so that you can see where I've got pencil lines. Otherwise, I would have been had more delicate. So I'm just going to go in there and you can see I've delineated the edge of that petal and I've also got the edge here of the stamen so I've got those little dots as well. So I'm going to let those bits dry and then I'm going to add the shadows to these other areas here until all of those petal edges can be seen without the pencil lines showing them up. So next we're going to remove our masking fluid. Now of course you must wait until the painting is dry before you do this. How many times I've smudged paintings because of trying to get masking fluid off, I should know better, but I still do it and maybe you've done it too. So do make sure that your painting is completely dry before you remove the masking fluid. And depending how it looks at this stage, we may just go in and touch up a little bit more pale yellow on top of the white areas that the masking fluid has revealed. So now this is dry, let's take off the masking fluid. I'm going to use an eraser to do this. Hopefully it'll um, remove some of the pencil at the same time as well. And I'll probably at this stage just take an eraser very gently across the whole flower. So I'm left with some white bits now and I'm just going to get a paintbrush and just put a tiny little bit of yellow in there. I'm not going to worry too much about covering up the white because at the end of the day it really won't notice very much and um, you know it can give it a bit of a, a bit of a highlight but they are generally light yellow these ones so I'm just going to drop a little bit of the light yellow in there as I said it's so pale that you won't really see the white but I think it I think it looks nicer actually to get a little bit more yellow in there and there's my flower so really happy with that flower it's got a nice lot of drama hasn't it all I have to do now is get on and paint the rest of the stem so do let me know in the comments what you found most useful about this tutorial and if you're going to have a go at painting a hollyhock yourself now are there any other sorts of flowers that you would like me to concentrate on do let me know in the comments as well and I'll add them to my sort of ever-growing list of videos to make remember that if you want to see the whole of this painting I mean not every second because it's kind of a 40 hour painting but if you want to see a lot more of this painting including all the leaves and the uh, the colors for those you can pop over and get those videos on my patreon and at this point I'd love to thank all my Patreon subscribers. You make it possible for me to put these free videos out too. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I have another one that you're going to find really, really useful. It features my 10 favorite realistic flower painting techniques. You can watch that video right now.